first at four. A search for bodies in Macomb County going on right now. This is a developing story as several agencies dig for clues in the disappearances of at least three young girls. Detroit police investigating the shooting of a three-year-old boy. We just got new information and someone is in custody. Paula. Hi, Karen. This is a main drag of a major shopping district, and usually construction is a drag. But why are more customers angry? I'll show you. Paula, it just keeps getting better. Temperatures continue to increase. There's got to be a ceiling to this somewhere. We'll look at it right now. First at four. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. First at 4, unsolved mysteries have turned into agonizing waits for the families for at least three young girls, maybe more. Take a look right now. This is the scene. Several law enforcement agencies are doing the grisly work of searching for bodies in Macomb Township. Let's bring in Local 4's Coco McAvoy. She has spent the day there on this developing story. And Coco, what is the latest? Good afternoon, Karen. So far, police have brought in more resources in this search here in Macomb Township. You can see the perimeter that is blocked off here by caution tape. Police have been searching out here for hours. Actually, this is day two now. They believe four to six bodies could be buried here in this field. It's obviously agonizing for the family members of those victims, and we're hearing from one of those family members here at four. More equipment was delivered this afternoon to continue digging for remains. Police have confirmed they are looking for the remains of Kimberly King from Warren. She disappeared in 1979 when she was just 12 years old. King's sister, Connie Bema, released a statement today that reads, quote, in part, my father is 80 years old. It's time for closure. We need to bring Kimberly home and lay her to rest as she deserves. She's been through enough and needs to be back with her family. Local Ford did some investigating to find the names of other young girls who went missing during the same time frame, including 17-year-old Kelly Brownlee from Novi, who vanished in 1982, 16-year-old Nadine Odell, last seen in Inkster in 1974, and 15-year-old Kim Laro, who disappeared from Canton in 1981. Sources say their cases could be connected, and they're planning to keep digging for at least the next couple of days. And we have the FBI out here, the Macomb County Sheriff's Department, the Warren Police Department as well, all working together on this big search. We're going to stay out here throughout the afternoon and have another live report for you at 5 o'clock. Back to you. All right, Coco, and if anything happens in the next 30 minutes, we'll check back with you. Otherwise, we will see you at 5. In other news this afternoon, we've got breaking news. President Donald Trump has pulled the trigger and he is ditching an international nuclear deal with the country of Iran. He just made it official. Devin Skillian following the very latest, and this is a decision that will have an impact all around the world, Devin. Uh, no doubt, Karen. It could be one of the president's most important uh, foreign policy decisions affecting U.S. allies and enemies alike. The president has long promised that he would pull the United States out of the deal, and today he said he's a man who keeps his promises. He spoke from the White House this afternoon about why he's pulling the U.S. out of the deal. The fact is this was a horrible one-sided deal that should have never, ever been made. It didn't bring calm, it didn't bring peace, and it never will. The president announced he will move now to reimpose all of the sanctions on Iran that were lifted under the deal back in 2015. Most U.S. allies, other than Israel, uh, urged the president to stay in the agreement. Today, the president of France, Emmanuel Macron, tweeted that uh, France, Germany, and the United Kingdom regret the U.S. decision. Well, now all eyes on Iran. Will it still honor the deal? Because not only was it signed by those European nations, but also by Russia. Uh, will it be willing to come back to the bargaining table and take another try at it? Former Secretary of State John Kerry helped negotiate the landmark agreement. He says that seems unlikely. Do you think an Iranian leader's politics are going to allow him to come back to the table and sit down and say, well, they pulled out of the deal, now we got to go back and negotiate with them? You tell me what leader in what political system would have the ability to be able to do that. Come on. 
Now, Iran says the president's decision is uh, amounting to psychological warfare and that the country is now considering what its next step will be. That decision comes at a critical time, of course. President Trump is also trying to negotiate a nuclear deal with North Korea. Uh, will North Korea be willing to make a deal when the president just left a U.S. agreement that was in place with Iran? So, so many different wrinkles of this to follow. More coming up with the reaction here at 5. Karen, back to you. All right. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. Devin. From Detroit, we have new information about that shooting of a three-year-old boy. We did just learn the boy's father is in custody while the child is in critical condition. Police now say the child found his father's gun and shot himself in the stomach. His father took the three-year-old to Children's Hospital. The shooting happened on Detroit's east side. Police officers have been at the scene on the 5900 block of Marcus near Conan and Mount Elliott. Ron Maloney is working this story, gathering the very latest, and will have an update for us live at 5. Prosecutors brought the man accused of killing Wayne State Police Officer Colin Rose back to court today. They wanted to know if he might be competent to stand trial. Back in November, a judge found Raymond Durham could not help defend himself, and he was to be evaluated by an independent expert. Well, today, while the judge noted some improvements, Durham was again found to be incompetent to stand trial. He will have further evaluations before his next court date. A boil water advisory has been issued for Macomb Township after a water main break. That break happened on 23 Mile Road between North Avenue and the Eastern Township border. Authorities say all customers in the area of that break are under the advisory, including residents of the Pinnacle Woods subdivision. The main break is expected to be fixed within a few days. However, the boil water notice will remain in effect until the water is tested and is safe to drink. We are getting a few days in a row of some really great weather. Ben Bailey is keeping track of it for it. How are, how are things tonight, Ben? Well, Jerry, you were writing a script for perfect weather. This is probably it. 74 outside, low humidity, plenty of sunshine, and light breeze. I mean, it's all coming together. It's just a beautiful afternoon. We're going to come back to you with you. I think we have microphone issues, but we will check back with you in a little bit, Ben. Meantime, tis the season for road repairs, and one Detroit suburb is going through more than its share of construction chaos. Businesses were worried about losing customers, but the city of Birmingham is really stepping up with a plan to keep shoppers to come back time after time. Paula joins us now. She is live in Birmingham. So what kind of perks are we talking about? They're making it easy. They're making it easy to be here. So listen, we all know that in Michigan, we have two seasons, right? Winter and construction. Welcome to construction. You can't sling a red hat in this area without hitting some sort of construction zone. But the big question is, why aren't customers angry at this mess? There is good reason. What looks more like a motocross off-road obstacle course for dirt bikes is actually Old Woodward Avenue in Birmingham. Now, look carefully past those mounds of dirt. Oh, yeah, and that eardrum racking construction noise. And you see commerce. We have infrastructure in our city that dates back to the uh, late 1800s, and so it's just time to replace some of these water pipes, sewer, and then we're going to also add infrastructure for fiber optic cable and IT for the future. This is the kind of summer construction that would kill most shopping districts, but Beham has a plan. Have a great day. You too. Thank you. Take care. For instance, we have free valet parking. Uh, we have four stands, the north, the south, the east, and the west side of the city in all the locations where you encounter the construction. A uh, customer can come in, drop his or her car here for two hours of free valet parking. The incentives the city and merchants are giving take some of the sting out of that construction with sales and a make friends with the unavoidable sense of creativity. I mean, I think you have to embrace it. Katie at Sarah Campbell, which sells trendy on point women's accessible fashion says business is actually booming during construction. We were worried. We were very concerned that it was going to be a deterrent, but it just doesn't seem to be the case. Finding street parking in Birmingham takes a stroke of luck and perhaps a strike of lightning on a good day. One of the best things for our shop is free valet, which happens to be at the corner. The valet helps immensely. 
And when I have meetings or I'm trying to get coffee or whatnot, it makes it really quick and easy for me to come into town and still enjoy. There are art contests that can be found on the city's website and bonus bucks. A page out of the Coles Black Friday playbook actually gives you credit for shopping and so-called bucks you can spend with area merchants. I've been accumulating my receipts. So once I get to either $200 in restaurants or $100 in retail, then you can um, submit them and get $20 off. Okay, so Karen, I know you come to Birmingham, right? Can you imagine during construction, it's actually easier? It's easier to park? So the construction continues until the last week of July or perhaps the first week of August. I talked to one customer and she was like, look, just keep it going because it's actually easier to park right now. I will tell you, you, Paula, I did have an errand to run and I was really worried. I didn't want to try to battle it, but I got in, I got mm -hmm. out. It was easy and the store that I visited told me the same thing. Their business is doing great because they are making it easy for shoppers. So we can keep shopping, they right really Paula? Are. <laughs> Exactly. That's right. See you in a minute. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you, Paula Tubman, live in Birmingham this afternoon. Still ahead on First at Four, are more Americans ready to get on board with electric cars? We will take a look at why more drivers are thinking about going green. And the next best thing to being there, this U.S. soldier was watching something pretty amazing on his phone, and his story is really touching a lot of hearts this afternoon. A first? A little girl rescued the story behind this heart-stopping video next.